Hello, everybody. My name is Paul Quinney, and this is the Flames Face-Off brought to you by the Hockey Writers. Now, this is a weekly show where we bring together our top writers in the Calgary writing pool, and we discuss all things Flames. Now, to be sure you don't miss an episode of this, you can subscribe to this YouTube channel and uh, be sure to follow us on Twitter and Facebook. Uh, and uh, if you like what you see, uh, share this with your friends and uh, fellow Flames fans. And uh, good news is uh, we can now, we are now available as a podcast. If you don't like seeing our uh, handsome faces here every week, um, just go to your, wherever you get your uh, podcasts and we'll be there on the Hockey Writers uh, Podcast Network. So with that, I'd like to introduce the panel this week. Uh, we have Greg Tzowski. Greg, welcome. How are you doing? Good. I, I went golfing this morning. I teed off really early, but by the ninth hole, that heat dome, I could feel it. We're, we're in a historic heat wave here in Calgary, and, uh, and we're not going to get out of the 30s for like eight days. We're, it's going to be 30 degrees, 36 degrees, 33 degrees. So watch out. If, if you're outside, watch out. Yeah, I, I, I hate so. golfing in that, that type of weather. You know, you, you just your hands are always wet. You you kind of slide off the club. But I don't, I don't know what you do, but uh, to yeah. deal with that. Lots of back sweat. Yeah, what I have. Uh, but, sweaty uh, back. Then I think you know January's coming, so uh, <laughs> just eat up this heat dome. Uh, and then we have none other than Brett Kroos. Brett, welcome. Hey, thanks for having me on. It's been a been a while since uh, I've been on since I missed yeah. the last one. So well, good to be back. Glad to have you back. And uh, tell us about that hat briefly, because you're usually usually wearing a Blue Jays hat. So what, <laughs> what do you got on your top of your head today? Yeah, I uh, <clears throat> switched it out for the uh, Portugal hat uh, this uh, this past month. I've uh, one of my best friends is mom's Portuguese, so we've uh, we've cheered for Portugal since we were kids. So that's. Uh, that's my soccer team since the, the Canadian one uh, doesn't quite make it to these big uh, tournaments. Yeah, well, if the Flames aren't playing, I guess you got to cheer for somebody. <laughs> got to cheer for something. Yeah, well, you got the Habs. I don't know <laughs> if that's sacrilege to even to Ooh, say yeah. on a show like this. But, so anyway, um, so let's uh, get right to it. Um, we've got a few things to talk about, even though we're – in summer um calgary was awash with uh, rumors this week on matthew to going to st louis um in return for uh vladimir tarasenko uh he's at the right wing and then possibly others i was intrigued with uh jordan Cairo, uh he's a center slash right wing and then uh colton per perico i don't know if i got the pronunciation of that name right can you guys help me with that? Pareco? Pareco, yeah. Yeah, Pareco yeah. sounds right. Yeah. And he's at right defense. Um, the rumor apparently started this week when um, on Sportsnet when analyst Shane O'Brien uh, on the Steve uh, Coolius Power Play podcast speculated that uh, uh, Tachik was uh, wanted out of town, wanted to go home to St. Louis, and basically – you know, the premise was not to trick his unhappy in Calgary and Tarasenko's worn his uh, welcome out in St. Louis. So voila, you've got a, the basis of a trade. And uh, then that starts speculation that other teams are looking uh, for to check to talk to Calgary about him. And uh, from what I've read, uh, the flames just denied that they're, he was on the, on the shopping block, uh, a little miffed, frankly, from what I understand of it, but what's your take, Greg? Um, is there anything to this? And, uh, if, if there is, then should the flames pull the trigger on sending to check out the door? Well, you know, I was kind of reading Twitter and other social media and other analysts and see what they were saying. And I know that the, uh, the sports 960 morning show guy reached out to the flames and they, uh, he, he sent out a tweet saying that they told him that uh, all these rumors, you know, uh, are complete fabrication and that, you know, like it's bull, it starts with bull and, and ends with Brian's with shirt. And so, so I don't really know what to think. You know, it's, it seems pretty far fetched to me that, uh, but the fact that Kachuk is from St. Louis, that's his hometown and 
he's he kind of casually said a little while ago that he'd like to play there someday kind of thing you know just you know like not immediately but i think he's it'd be cool to play in your hometown he, he might have said that in an interview people are kind of reading into that but as for this whole situation like you uh i don't know how the flames would ever think that you would trade someone who is still on the upswing in his career for someone who's kind of on the downturn like um tarasenko i think was once an elite scorer in this league but He's missed so much time in recent yeah. seasons, and he's just, uh, you're right, he, he, he may have worn his, his welcome out in St. Louis. So it's it's possible that sometimes guys get a, a second lease on life if they get a second chance with a different team. Like, that's a possibility. But everything that I've read about this, and everyone, everyone who's been talking about this uh, has, has told me that it would just be insanity to, like, trade a young guy for a guy who's think, turning 29 pretty soon I've heard. So, um, and that's kind of that 29, 30 is when a lot of people say that that's when the production really tails off. So I don't know. It's, 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 to me, it's a crazy rumor and I can't see it happening, but you know, crazier things have happened. And if, if the flames are going to do something big, this, this could be it. But uh, I would be surprised uh, if this, yeah. anything came out of this. Yeah. Brett, what's your take? Anything to this? Um, yeah, I listened to the, uh, the clip where the, the rumor came from and it just kind of sounded, you know, more so like a couple of guys just pondering sort of other than <clears throat> over an, an actual rumor. Um, I, I kind of find it very similar to the, the Johnny Goudreau rumors where, oh, you know, he'd probably would like to go play in his hometown. I mean, what NHL player wouldn't like to go play for their hometown team. So um, yeah, I think I think Greg was you know spot on that. I think it's there's not a lot to it, and it, it seems that yeah, Flames management is kind of upset that it got out. Um, and yeah, I think uh, Colton wrote an article actually. I'll, I'll uh, touch on that. He you know he said it would be a mistake to trade Kachuk, and pretty much basically what Greg said is this Kachuk's on the upswing here of his career and. Uh, Tarasenko's like 29 or 30 and Pareko's 28 and it's just yeah um, wouldn't make a ton of sense for where the flames are at right now because I think if you're trading guys like Kachuk that's full-on rebuild mode there and but Kachuk's even a guy that you you should keep around in a rebuild so I think it's yeah definitely a crazy rumor for sure yeah yeah, you mentioned Colton Pankey's article, uh, who's usually, of course, on on this show. Um, but he he was uh, in the article. He mentioned Tarasenko. I was quite astonished. He he's missed ninety games in the last two seasons. Um, I guess bad shoulders, uh, shoulder problems. Um, and then you know, to Greg's point, he's he's trailed. He was an elite scorer, and I, I don't know that that's any longer the case and of course he lacks to Chuck's physical style but be that as it may um there is a theory that you may want to trade to Chuck because under the the CBA the collective bargaining agreement um they have the flames have to make them uh a nine million dollar uh one year qualifying offer in 2020 in at the end of end of the 2022-23 season. And what the theory goes is what Tuchuk could do is accept it, play a year in Calgary, and then he becomes a UFA, in which case he's in the driver's seat. So it looks like he, he holds all the bargaining power. So, you know, the thinking is, well, it's better to deal him now before you get into that situation. Do you put any stock in that at all, Greg? You know, I, I heard that too, and so that, and I, you know, I think that's a possibility that you have to consider. But um, I think I think that Kachuk had a down year just this past year, and uh, it, it's really the only he was on an upward trajectory before this year, and uh, and uh, I think that it was a blip. I really don't know. I, I, I'm pretty sure he's coming back next year strong, and he's maybe going to become the leading scorer of this team again i uh, i'm pretty sure of that i would i'd bet on that so um i still i think you have to hold on to this guy i think he i think there's more upside to him than uh and even if you end up paying more for him than you want to like that's not the end of the world because uh 
I think a lot of teams have success by building through the draft. And this is a, this is one of the highest draft picks we've ever had. It's hard to get value for that. It's hard to get a good player coming back the other way through a trade and everything. So I just think you have to hold on to this guy and, uh, and keep him in your system. I think he is, uh, I think he is the real deal and someone, a cornerstone of the franchise and potentially future captains. So I think, uh, I think you do, you have to do whatever it takes to, to keep him in Calgary. I don't, I don't really buy into you should deal him now to avoid paying more for him later. So I'd say keep him. Yeah. Brett, are you in that square? Do you, do you, you know, deal him now and avoid in, in order to avoid paying more later, or is there anything to that? Um, yeah, I, I think, you know, kind of looking at where like the, there's a flat salary cap and yeah, it's a lot of money, but at the same time, like that's just kind of becoming the price that you have to pay for guys who I like Kachuk, I feel can score 70 points in a season. Um, and like near point per game pace. And that's just kind of the money you have to pay those guys in today's day and age. It's, it seems like a lot, but that's just the way the, the dollar value is trending. So I, I think, yeah, it would be a mistake to trade him. I think that's the kind of guy you have to work into your plan. And, um, you know, you got to figure out the, the salary implications later on. But uh, uh, yeah, I absolutely think that he's a guy that they, they should be looking at extending as soon as possible, I think. Okay. So switching gears here, I wanted to uh, have a discussion on whether um, the flames go with uh, free agents the way they did last year to round out their roster or whether they go with uh, younger players, give them a chance in uh, 2021, 2022 season. Um you know, they didn't have a lot of cap space last year. And so what they did is they picked up a bunch of older guys, uh, older UFAs on the cheap. And arguably, it didn't work out for them. And so now the view is, hey, why not give uh, a shot to some of the younger players? Uh, you know, they still don't have uh, cap space. Um, so assuming you could get Richie and Dubé re-signed, uh, to fill out their first three lines, then you've got, um, and that Ryan leaves town, then you've got a complete fourth line that you'd have to fill. And you'd be looking at uh, players like uh, uh, Glenn Godden, a restricted free agent, Brian, uh, uh, Byron Fraze, Adam Rzitska, Matthew Phillips, uh, Pelche, Connor Zary. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Which direction would you go in if you were at your living? Uh, back to the original plan, sign a bunch of old UFAs or give the young the young uh, bucks a, a shot at the roster? Greg, thinking? Well, I think it's evident that uh, what they tried last year with, with a bunch of these guys really didn't work out. You know, like, uh, like Dominic Simone was a failed experiment. He played 11 games and, and Nordstrom was hired to be a – PK specialist, but he didn't really add anything offensively. Now he's going to Russia to play. Like, so I, those guys won't be back obviously. Um, so I don't, I see no real downside to, to trying out some of these young guys. The only thing I can, the only thing about that is like someone like Matthew Phillips is like a high skill forward. He, he's like he, a great skater and he's you know great vision. He's a great passer and playmaker. And I don't know if he's a fourth line guy. I think you, Matthew Phillips is someone you would want to be playing in a, a, maybe a top six role. So yeah. do you want a, a bunch of these guys to, to be in your fourth line? I don't know. Or, or, do, or do you rejig everything? Like is Matthew Phillips going to, going to play, you know, on a line with some, some of the flames best forwards. Cause uh, I, uh, I just wrote an article uh, about him and I think he's worth, a shot this year. I think he's paid his dues and, you know, he's been a, no one has scored more goals for the Stockton heat in the last three seasons than Matthew Phillips. So um, someone like him and like Adam Rizichka is kind of a, he's kind of a slightly bigger, slightly tougher version of Sean Monaghan. You know, like he's uh, he's kind of a pure kind of scorer, you know, in the slot. And so he could be, again, he's, he's not to me a fourth line guy. You know, he's, he has to be put in a more offensive role, I think, as well. So that's the kind of thing you have to balance out. Like these young guys, the kind of skill guys, and is that the kind of fourth line you want? You know, just a, a bunch of young guys who 
who should be more top six theoretically. So it's kind of hard to say if the Flames will promote a bunch of these young guys. So mm. I, I think they're worth a shot to see where they fit in the lineup, but maybe not in the fourth line. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. No, I, I looked at their, their depth chart and thought, okay, if you could get Dubé and Richie signed there, there's your, mm-hmm. your top three, but to your point, I, I hey, you may not want to re-sign Richie at all, but uh, Brett, what's your take? What's, what direction would you go in uh, old UFAs or give the young guys a shot? Um, I think maybe a, a mix of both uh, just kind of, I can see Brett Ritchie coming back. He seems like a Daryl Sutter type. Um, and I think Matthew Phillips does deserve a shot, to, you know, more than one meaningless game at the end of the season. Um, and I <clears throat> kind of like talking about playing young guys. I look at Tampa Bay, who's currently in the Stanley Cup final, and they, you know, they, they have a fourth line, uh, which has Patrick Maroon on it. So an older guy who was a UFA. Um, but then they have guys like this Ross Colton who spent, you know, a couple of years in the AHL and uh, then they called him up and he's done relatively well. He's a young guy and, you know, guys like uh, Matthew Joseph and Anthony Sorelli, they're all later picks who spent some time in the AHL and then they gave their young guys a shot to, to play on this team. And <clears throat> they have, you know, a, a decent fourth line that's got skill and can play. So um, I think, yeah, you, you can't, I don't want to see them, you know, fill the roster with a bunch of UFAs like they did last year. Um, but I think guys like uh, Josh Lebo and bringing him back could be a guy um, that you could have young guys play with because, you know, he's a decent two-way player. So that um, could help ease them in. Or even a guy like Michael Backlund, I see as a, a guy that Matthew Phillips could line up alongside and you know Backlund's pretty defensively sound so that kind of would give uh, Phillips a little bit easier time um, sort of getting into it but um, mm-hmm. yeah even in that Vancouver game uh, Phillips and Ruzichka and played with Lucic and the line did relatively well that game so uh, yeah I think I think it's just about giving uh, those young guys sort of a shot in a, a smaller role yeah do you, um, Greg, uh, on defense, uh, I've seen some speculation that they would put or ought to put Valimaki with Mackey. Uh, is that a pairing you'd go with or would you rotate them through with uh, Stone? Well, I just think the Valimaki Mackey rolls off the tongue. I, <laughs> I think you I think you put them together just for the, uh, for the phonetics, but um, yeah. You know, I, you know, I think, you know, it kind of depends which route they want to go. Like, it seems like the Flames want these young guys to develop, but then they keep bringing Stone back in the last few years. Like, and, like again, I thought he was left for dead this past uh, offseason, and he was on their taxi squad, and all of a sudden he's playing the last half of the season, like, and pretty well, too. Like, he has a heavy shot, and uh, he, I was surprised at uh, how he was utilized, but he also impressed me, so it's like – Part of me wants to say, like, just, you know, go with the young guys. You, you have to develop these guys. You, you have to get them ice time. You have to get, get see what they're made of, you know. But they keep going back to Stone. And I think we've talked about this before. I think there's a good chance that they re-sign Stone again. And um, he's going to be the, the sixth or seventh. So it's funny. Maybe if they kind of rotate him in once in a while, you know. But uh, I would like to see these these young pairings develop. And, and I think Daryl Sutter um, – has less patience maybe for these young guys and other coaches in the past have had. So they think they would have to be a play a bit more um, solidly both ways, you know, and be more tall in, in their own end. But, uh, you know, I'm hope, hopeful that the young guys can take the next step and we can leave Michael Stone on the back burner. But I, I don't know. I think he's going to make a, another play to crack this roster again. So yeah. well, I guess we'll, we'll have to find out. Well, I quoted you in an article I wrote this week uh, referring to Stone as like gum on your shoe. You just can't <laughs> r- get rid of them. So, you can't uh, get rid of them, yeah. I don't know. Uh, Brett, what's your take uh, on – and I'll use that new expression. It's uh, probably it's better than uh, third string the Ming. Uh, <laughs> Mackie and Valimaki. Uh, what are your thoughts on them as a pairing? And where, where actually does Shillington fit in? uh in all of this in your view um yeah i mean 
I think like Michael Stone's a guy that they absolutely sign as a, a seventh D man because he did actually do fairly well under Daryl Sutter's system. So uh, I have a feeling he'll be coming back. Um, and it'll, it kind of depends here on the expansion draft. If if the Flames don't lose um, a defenseman here, it'll kind of be a log jam because I I would rather kind of see you know Valimaki play with um, a pair of. Uh, Mackie and Shillington uh, if they're you know both comfortable on the right side there because um, yeah I think you, you got to play the young guys it's the only way they're gonna learn and uh, get better so um, but I, I think I have a feeling that Michael Stone will be coming back in that seventh role so that you know um, they seem to be pretty high on Connor Mackey and he he did very well in the American Hockey League so um, yeah, I think that's one where Shillington could be the odd man out. And if he's not taken in the expansion draft, he, um, you know, maybe traded before the expansion draft and they think Seattle's going to take him, and they'll just get what they can for him. Yeah. Yeah. Well, switching gears, another, uh, uh talking point in Cowtown this week is what do you do with Mangiapani? Uh, Andrew Mangiapani, he had a, a great year, uh, spectacular uh, performance at the world uh, championship. Uh, Greg, you wrote about that. And so the view is, uh, Hey Calgary, what are you waiting for? Why not sign him now? Um, Greg, what are your thoughts on that to uh, sign him to a long-term extension now and, uh, or wait? Well, you, you could roll the dice. Like uh, the thing is that uh, he's the past two years, he's just progressed, you know, farther and farther. Like he, he was the best uh, five on five scorer they had this year. Like uh, he only played like 12 and a half minutes a night, but yet he had, he had the most five on five points of on the team. And he had, he was second in goal scoring this year. Like I said, and, and he doesn't get the power play minutes, the PP one, he doesn't get the same kind of minutes as the other top forwards. And yet he was up there. So that's why he, he got an A in my season ending report card. And uh, he did himself, he did himself a, a big favor by, becoming the MVP of that world championship. So he, a, a lot of people who didn't hear of Andrew Mangiapane before know who he is now because he was yeah. a, a big factor in that gold medal. He showed up and they didn't lose a game in regulation after he showed up. So um, I think the Flames should give him the extension now because what if he continues next year? And uh, I'm thinking now you could probably get him for like, 4.5, 5 million a season. But if he has another lights out season, you know, if he scores, you know, 25 goals next year and, you know, and keeps playing his five on five, you know, dominance, like he's been doing uh, all, all of a sudden you're, you're looking at me paying him 6 million or, or something, you know, like he's, he's only going to get better. I think. So if the flames were smart, they should lock him in now where he's still relatively cheap, you know, and yeah. for, for like he, he is, he was the best value contract the Flames have this year, you know, by a country mile. So yeah. I say resign that guy fast. Brett, um, what would you do? Do you, do you resign him long-term now? And any thoughts uh, on if you did, what that contract would look like? Yeah. Um, I, I think that's a guy they need to sign, you know, right now. Um, yeah. I think that's a guy that, you know, they should be working with uh, as well as uh, Johnny Udro this summer to, get signed to long-term extensions because uh yeah Mangiapane's really progressed here in the last two seasons and the, I think one of the last few shows you know one of one of us brought up the stat that he's got as many five-on-five -five goals as guys like Sidney Crosby and Anzi Kopitar so uh and his yeah world championship performance was he quarantined in a hotel room came in three games late not really much practice time and he was lights out so um yeah i think that's that's a guy they need to lock up as, as soon as possible before his uh price tag goes up yeah no i agree he really put himself on the map in the uh, world championships that's for sure yeah. um Wanted to switch gears now to some articles uh, that were written by you guys this week uh greg you wrote one um Flames little late round draft picks 30 years apart. And you were referring there, of course, to Theo Fleury and Matthew Phillips. Um, what kind of pushback did you get on social media? Because I know you posted it uh, out there. Um, yeah. What do you get? Well, 
Well, I, I put it on these like Flames fan pages and see what I get. But I think a lot of people don't even really read the articles. They see the headlines and they just kind of lose their minds because they're talking about like, you know, oh, as if Matthew Phillips is going to be the next Theron Fleury. Theron Fleury is a future Hall of Famer, Matthew Phillips. You know. yeah. I'm just saying he deserves a shot. I'm just saying it's interesting because they were both 166th pick. Although Fleury was in the eighth round, which doesn't exist anymore. And Phillips was in the sixth round. But they were both like 166, which was... The coincidence and so was actually Andrew Mandrapani was also 166 as well for a smaller guy but I was just kind of just comparing them as like they were both small guys 5'6 for Fleury and 5'7 for Matthew Phillips and I guess my whole point of the article wasn't saying that you know Matthew Phillips is, is a lock to be the next Theo Fleury because he's a very different player like Fleury he, he was a stocky 100 you know 180 pound 5'6 player and Matthew Phillips might be 155 pounds soaking wet um, he's a little guy. And, uh, but I just think, uh, you know, like the flames have kind of had a spotty record with small guys, like, like Theo Fleury is, I think a, a deservedly hall of fame player. Um, and they obviously took a chance on good row. Yeah. Five, nine, but there's been a lot of players over the years, like Martin St. Louis at five, eight, they kind of passed on that guy. He became a hall of famer. Um, even, even guy like Paul Byron, who plays for the Habs, he's five, nine, and he's kind of a smaller guy. He's, he was kind of, Went on waivers, you know, and, he, and the Habs picked him up. And you know, Mark Savard was like five nine, five ten. He he ended up having a great career with Boston. So for, for every little guy the Flames have kept, like Fleury and and uh, Johnny Hockey, they've also let guys slip through the cracks and, and can get out of the system. So I think that Phillips is deserves a chance. He he deserves a long look. You know, at training camp, he deserves to make me make the opening roster and to see where he slots in because he's got great hands. He's speedy. He's, they don't know where he's going to go with his fast footwork. So he's someone they should give a real shot to. And, and that was my whole point of the article was, uh, you know, and people were pushing back saying I was I was an idiot for comparing him to Theo Fleury. But, you know, yeah. you, you don't know what's going to happen unless you actually give someone the shot. So that yeah. was my whole point. Give this guy a shot. All right, Brett. Well, you know, Greg's put that ball up in the air. Do um, you want to take a swing at it? Join his Facebook fans and tell him he doesn't know what he's talking about. Can you mention Flurry in the same breath as Phillips? What do you, what do you, what do you think? No, I've got uh, no, no insults here for Greg as I'm the one person who actually read the article. Um, but yeah, I think it's exactly right. You'll never know until you give him that shot and, uh, that one game, he he looked uh, like he belongs, and uh, I caught a couple of Stockton's games last this past season, and you know he just he looks good in that league. He's comfortable. He he makes high skill plays. So I think uh, definitely, uh, like I said, a guy that should see you know twenty at least twenty games this this season. Yeah, just uh, you know out of out of the blue. Uh... What do you thought? Do you think there is a place still in the NHL and in today's NHL for smaller players? What do you think, Brett? Uh, oh, absolutely. I, yeah. I think more so today than, you know, Theron Fleury's day. He only made it because he was, you know, such a wild man. Um, and But, I, yeah, I think the way the game is going today, it's, you know, a lot less on the heavy hitting and the fighting, and it's more so on the, the skill and puck work and, uh, how, actually having, you know, the hockey IQ to to be in the world's best league. So I think, yeah, now is better. Any t no better time for Matthew Phillips right now because, you know, he's proved at every single level he's played that you can go, go back on on his uh, hockey DB profile that he, he's more than capable. So the NHL is kind of his last step here, and I, I think he's a guy who could make some noise for sure. Yeah. Greg, uh, I'm guessing you, you you believe there's a role for smaller players in the league, maybe even an expanded role. Yeah, even even if you're looking at the Seneca playoffs, like the Montreal Canadiens, Cole Cofield has been you know playing great. You know, he's been, and he's not a big guy. You know, he's a he's a, he's another small player, and um, yeah. you know, and and un, undoubtedly Calgary is most uh, talented offensive player. You know, Johnny Goudreau. You know, like he's he, he's proven that he can score in this league you know and he's he's not super small at five nine but uh you know i think i think it's uh more than you know people have proven that these smaller guys can compete and excel and uh i don't think there's any doubt that 
the smaller players can can make it in this league and uh, and deserve a shot more than ever in this in this time where, where skill is king and uh, and there's no you know the rough stuff is basically diminishing with each passing season if you ask me yeah yeah well gentlemen uh, unfortunately we've run out of time uh, but thank you for the discussion as always it was enjoyable and thank you everybody for joining us for another edition of the Flames Face Off uh, we'll be back in two weeks time. And in the meantime, be sure to uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel and check us out on social media. We're there on Twitter and Facebook, LinkedIn. Um, and uh, as I said at the start of the show, if our handsome faces are too much for you to bear, uh, we're now available uh, as a podcast on the Hockey Writers uh, Podcast Network, uh, available on um, anywhere you get your, your podcasts. And be sure to check out the great content that we have here at thehockeywriters.com. Until uh, next time, take care.